the book Seen Like a State, the author James C. Scott explores a really unique analogy comparing forestry man or for the development of forest management in the 18th century in Prussia and Saxony to the how our modern day states deal with things like agriculture, land management, and urban planning. What I hope to share with you today is uh, a bit to expand on this analogy a bit and also introduce to you to the idea of human learning ecology. If we start with the premise that human development is a result of an ecology, we can start to see how understanding those dynamics would be important in figuring out what it takes to develop resourceful, resilient, responsible, and life-ranging human beings. As our author explores in his book, one of the first things he talks about is how humans have become accustomed to looking at the world through much too narrow of a, a lens. Through that lens, um, we start to see the details within it and we become focused on the things that can be um, controlled uh, and managed. And those things become our pe perceived reality. They become the, thing that the things that are most important to us. And this process wasn't lost on uh, forestry management. At times in our history, we've really regarded the forest for much more than just the trees. We valued it for everything in it, its life-sustaining properties. The things like the ferns, the fish, the rivers, everything. And we valued it too for our human interaction with the forest. So hunting and gathering, things like medicinal purposes, and even spiritual ceremony. And this can be reflected in the way that we talk about the forest. So for example, we use the term nurse log. A nurse log is a tree that's fallen over and new trees grow out of it. So we recognized as humans that just as um, we nurse our own young, trees nurse their young too, and they, and they support the next generation of trees to come. As we, as we started to urbanize, we began to look at the forest uh, very differently. Um, more timber was required for uh, construction and uh, for fuel. And again, uh, we started to just look at the forest completely differently. Um, we started to focus on a narrow fiscal lens and the details within that narrow lens that we focused on were things like tree species, tree age, and volume of lumber. And our language around the forest changed too. Anything that didn't contribute to this system, we deemed as weeds or pests. And this was the result. Um, we res the result was uh, monoculture plantations like you see here. As our author said, uh, the trees and the forest started look to look something more akin to a standing army than to a standing forest. And he said, the tendency was towards regimentation in the strict sense of the word. The forest trees were drawn up into serried uniform ranks to be measured, counted off, felled, and replaced by a new rank of look-alike conscripts. But our forest managers actually learned from this process. They started to uh, reintroduce the native ecology that once was in the forest. So you'll see forest managers talk about things like multi-species and multi-aged uh, stands of forest now. So they treat the forest a lot differently. The result of that monoculture plantation though um, was that the uh, nutrient cycles in which the trees were growing up in became depleted. Um, the trees could no longer s withstand things like pests and disease and, and strong winds and storms. Um, and the sad part was is that in that system, uh, the uh, nutrients and resources were no longer left in the soil for the next generation of trees to grow. So I in essence, the production and, pr um, and profit from that system um, fell apart. So we had to figure out a new way of doing things. And we've done that with, with forest ecology, as we see in lots of examples. But we haven't fully learned from this example. Um, we see this monoculture idea in um, agriculture, a place that I work. Um, and we also see it in places like the palm plantations um, in Malaysia, the Philippines. The rainforests are being replaced by these palm plantations at an alarming rate. Um, and we've also taken a very narrow focus on this too. 
Um, you'll know that uh, palm oil is the sole product from this system, and you'll see palm oil in a lot of products like household goods and industrial goods. Um, I challenge you to look at your ingredients list at home and, and not find it. Um, and we look at it through this very narrow lens as well, and we can draw uh, nice little pictures of, of how we think it is. So we kind of focus on these, these narrow metrics within that. But sadly, this misses a bigger part of the story of what's really going on. So in order to put these palm plantations in, uh, we have to practice slash and burn techniques where we clear the forest of uh, everything, really, um, in order to prepare the land for the plantations. And this uh, has been detrimental to all of the species living within it. One of the saddest uh, cases is the plight of the orangutan. So the orangutans, um, through slash and burn, are either left in the forest to die, they're sometimes left half burned, um, and some that survive are captured and enter into a life of captivity uh, in the cities. One could say that the resourcefulness and the resilience of the orangutan species is being destroyed with every native tree felled. This begs the question, what is, uh, what is the resourcefulness and resilience um, of the human being? And what has the ecology in which we've grown up in done to our resourcefulness and resilience? Since the 1950s, we've been uh, measuring success and products in our own lives in increasingly narrow frames. Um, we've measured on, on the house, the car, the job. And these metrics tell us very little about the health of the community, just as things like volume of lumber tell us very little about the health of our forests. It's led to a world where we see increasing income gaps, where one million people are obese and one million people are malnourished, where, where uh, countries are wrapped up in perpetual war, and where we're destroying the ecological systems on which we depend. Our citizens and our leaders are at the edge of, the of their capacity to deal with these large problems. From the ecology from which we've grown up, few are actually equipped with the skills needed to take on these major challenges that we're facing as a species. What kind of ecology do we need to be creating in order to support the kind of thinking it's going to take to, ch to take on these issues? Luckily, there's a community of people who are taking that on, and they're exploring the discipline of human learning ecology. They're thinking about the kind of ecology that it's going to take for future generations um, to survive some of the storms that we may go through as a species. We may not know all of the uh, intricate dynamics of what that ecology uh, will take, but we do know something about the capacities that it's going to need, that we're going to need in the future. We're going to need people who are resourceful, and they're, they're not limited to a given number of resources and information provided to them by things like media, marketing, and politics. Just like in the, a healthy forest uh, needs an abundance and a variety of resources and nutrients to draw in in which to be healthy. We need people who are resilient in that they can stand up or they can uh, be prepared for emerging and unforeseen challenges. Just as a healthy forest can withstand trees and pests, we need people who are can withstand things like ignorant and narrow ways of thinking. We need people who are responsible and that they realize that they aren't just a single tree but that they're part of a larger forest and a larger ecology. And what we really need is people who care about that ecology and that, for that community, because it's not only what we grow up in, but it's what sustains us. And we also need people who are life-ranging and that they aren't controlled by the plantation in which we've grown up in. They're out learning from real life and truly trying to figure out what it means to be alive and human. Thank you.